Advanced Functions Practice Exam Part 3 and welcome to the last and final lesson of Advanced Functions as I take up this part of the exam with you. So um, I do hope by now that you've subscribed because we're going into calculus and vectors soon and you would like to know I'm sure when I start posting those videos. At least I hope you will. So let's get right into number nine here. It says determine the defining equation of the polynomial function whose graph is shown. Two mark question. Hmm, not a lot of marks for this. I'm going to do some fancy work here. So remember, you need to look at what do you see here already that you know? What do you know should be part of this equation? And the first thing I would say is that it's going to be a negative cubic function. Negative because we're starting in this quadrant, it's a slope like a negative line, and cubic because it has three single roots. So I can start by writing out what do I know about where the roots are. So I have minus 2, so that gives me x plus 2, and I have 1, so that's x minus 1. Remember, it's what makes this 0. So here's my beginning equation. Now, if you recall from quadratic days when you had two zeros, the shape of the function through here could be very different depending on something called the a value, right? So I need to solve for a. Don't stop here and expand and think you're done. That will get you probably one mark. And this is so easy. So let's find another point, and I would choose this one right here on the y-axis. So I have the point 0 and minus 3. So I'm going to solve for a by plugging in 0 for x. So everywhere I have an x, I put a 0, and that just leaves me with this. <coughs> so I have minus 3 is equal to 6a, and a is equal to minus 1 half. Common mistake is to say this is minus 2. It's happened many, many times with students of mine. Just be careful. You're dividing by 6. Okay, so now that you have that, you need to make the statement of what the equation is. So you'd say minus a half, x plus 2, x minus 1, times x minus 3. Now, I think I would have expected my students to expand this. Um, not for two marks, I would have made this a three mark question. And you should know how to expand carefully here. What you need to do is expand this first, like do two binomials, and then multiply it by the third and then times minus a half. And I'll tell you what you get when you multiply these three pieces together here, just to save some time here, because I'm sure you know how to do this. Okay, that's what this is expanded. And then you would go through and multiply um, by minus a half. So that changes the sign to positive for this one, positive for this one, and negative for this one. And there you go. Two easy marks. Okay, number 10. Sketch the graph of f at x and its reciprocal function on the same axis. Clearly label on your graph. Make sure you read this, right? Label on your graphs all x and y intercepts, all asymptotes, including their equations. <coughs> so don't change yourself on marks because you didn't spend the time to write those out. Okay, so this function here is a cubic function. Again, we have an x times an x squared would be x cubed. It has a positive leading coefficient, which means it's going to start in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 1. So I'm going to put my x-intercepts on here, noting that this is a double root. So it's going to go like this here, and this one is going to just pass right through. So I need some other points for accuracy here. One I would choose would be the y-intercept. What happens when x is 0? So I would have minus 2 times positive 4, which gives me negative 8. So that's here. So I know this is going to go through here, but this is not the lowest point. Not necessarily, right? You need to check some other points. So let's try um, 1. When x is 1, what's f at 1? f at 1 would give me negative 1 times 3 squared. So here, that's, that's farther down, right? Negative 9. So this isn't calculus, so your teacher shouldn't... Well, they might expect you. It depends on how, 
how your teacher is. They might want you to do more points, but this would be nice. This would be nice, just like this. And finish this off, put arrows on the end. Okay, so x-intercepts, they're marked here with dots, so I know where you're going. Okay, now the second part, y equals 1 over f of x. Remember, this is your lesson on reciprocal functions. You might want to go back and go over that if you're having trouble. First thing you're going to do is make asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, where you have zeros. Right, because 1 over 0 is undefined, so 1 over 0 here, 1 over 0 here. The other special point you should recall from reciprocal functions is that if the height of the function is 1 at the point on the original graph, then 1 over 1 is still 1. So these points here, this one, this one, and this one, will still be points on the reciprocal function, because you're just putting 1 over it. Now the other thing is that everything that was increasing will now be decreasing and the lowest point becomes the highest point in the interval. So for instance this point here that was negative 9, 1 over negative 9 is negative 1 ninth, right? So I'm going to be up here, minus a ninth. And this point here will be minus an eighth, which is just a tiny bit lower. And so this is my highest point. So I'm going to be coming down here. And I'm going to go through the point that was minus one. So maybe my graph wasn't too accurate right here. I'm going to pencil it in so it goes through minus one. Okay, so maybe more like that. Because your minus 1 here on this graph is going to still be one of those points. I didn't put that one on. So here, here we go. So we had 3 minus 1 points and 1 plus 1. So this has to go through here and down. And my asymptotes here are x equals 2. And this asymptote is x equals minus 2. And, okay, we still have to finish this side of the graph. So this was increasing, so this is going to be decreasing. Oh, to what? Well, 1 over x minus 2 and x plus 2 squared also has a horizontal asymptote, right? So we'll call this um, f negative 1x. Okay, so it has a horizontal asymptote horizontal asymptote and do you remember what it would be as this gets really big one divided by a really really big number is a really really small number so it's going to be y equals zero so I'm going to write that asymptote on here as well y equals zero and we're just missing this part of the graph here so this was increasing remember you're reading from left to right so it's increasing on this side so it's going to come down and decrease like this on this side. There. So there's your function. Isn't it lovely? Okay, that's five marks. You should be able to do that one. I'm sure there will be a reciprocal function question on your exam as well. Okay, number 11. Find the exact value of cos 5 pi over 12 by using the appropriate compound angle formula. So remember when you're finding 5 pi over 12, the easiest way to do is figure out how many degrees is 5 pi over 12. So pi over 12 is 15 degrees, and 15 times 5 is 75. So 5 pi, I'll just write this over here for you, equals 75 degrees. So the easy ones to add to 75 are 45 and 30. So I'm going to say that the cos of 5 pi over 12 is going to be equal to the cos of, and we're going to add, use an addition formula. So pi over 4 plus pi over 6. So that's 30 degrees. And if you put it into 12, of course, this would be 2 and 3, and 2 and 3 is 5. Okay, now you have to remember what your addition formula is, and maybe your teacher will give you that. And it's cos, cos minus sine sine. So I have cos pi over 4, 
cos, cos, minus, sine, sine. Okay, so maybe you might need to write out your special triangles, but um, I'm just going to tell you the answers because I'm sure you can look that up. So cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. Cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Now note that all of these angles are in the first quadrant, so I don't have to worry about the sign, right? They're all positive. If you were working with something that um, wasn't in quadrant 1, you make sure that you adjust for the signs. Okay, so I have that, and I'm minusing sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2 and the sine of pi over 6 is a half. You'll remember those after doing, maybe you do already. So this gives me root 3 over 2 root 2 minus 1 over 2 root 2. And wow, I didn't give much room to do this question at all. So root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. Now this would not be good enough for a final solution because you would be expected to rationalize this denominator. So I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2 to finish this off. That gives me root 6 minus root 2 over 2 times 2 is 4. There you go. Okay, solve for x on the interval indicated. Okay, so now we're solving some equations. Um, a, a quadratic cos function, right? So we have squared single power constant between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. So you have to make sure you're getting a sufficient number of solutions here. So this is like solving a quadratic. So I'm looking for a product of minus 2 and a sum of 1. And that should give you 2 times minus 1 and 2 plus minus 1. We put them over 2. And that gives me, well, I'm just going to write it here. 